Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the Seymour Micro HMI object bitmap. And on the Seymour Micro software, under the object list, you will see the bitmap. And the first one here is bitmap button. And you'll notice under the parts list, we'll have several different uh, options here. Um, we'll use sample number two here. We drag that up onto our screen. And when we do, we have our bitmap button, button come up up here and this is what it looks like off and this is what it looks like on and you can actually uh, read from a disk if you want to create your own buttons using uh, a bitmap and then we have um, our simulator we can turn that on and off and see what it's going to look like and then under each of the bitmaps on and off you'll see the lock as aspect ratio meaning the same dimensions as what you originally drew it as and stretch to fit which would be stretch it out so that it would fit the box or the location that you want it and then we can also set a transparency color within this bitmap so that yeah, whatever's in behind will see it through then we set our background color we'll leave everything the same and then we can set up our, just like a regular uh, button, we can set up our button tag and our indicator tag. In this case here, we're going to use MC9. Um, and if we look at MC9, right here, you see that it's actually a Modbus address, uh, PLC address 0009. Right? And it's a read-write one. So that is um, where our tag information is coming from. And of course, our object type is going to be toggle. So when we hit it on first time, it comes on. Hit it on second time, it'll go off. So that is our bitmap button. So we'll just hit OK. Cancel that. Then we'll go over to the next one, which is our static bitmap. And our static bitmap will allow you to uh, display a uh, bitmap onto the uh, HMI. In our case here, we're displaying our logo here and again we can just read from disk and we can um, we have the lock aspect ratio and the stretch to fit if I did not have those on stretch to fit or the lock aspect ratio hit OK you won't be able to see much because the actual image is much bigger than what I can display so if I choose that and then we open it up and we can say stretch to fit it will stretch the fit. You'll notice that it's a little awkward. It's a little uh, wider than we want. So we can put the aspect ratio and it narrows it right up for us. Then once we're done with that, we just hit OK. And again, as always, we can just resize the, the unit where we want to. So that's static. Um, that's a static bitmap. Now, one interesting thing we can do with static bitmaps, if we go back to our previous page here, which we did last time, which was our gra uh, graphs, and in this particular case, our bar graph, which is right here. If we put a static image over there and we put a transparent uh, part of it, we can make it simulate um, what we have in the field. So let's just do that. Let's add a... Um, static image onto this page and down here and we have a there we go a gas cylinder it could be any cylinder at all um, this one here um, I quickly uh, uh, drew up so here we go we open that up and again let's uh, this is what it's going to look like. So we're going to lock the aspect ratio. We're going to stretch to fit. And we're going to set our background color. And currently right now it's set for white, which is exactly, we have white right in the middle here of our cylinder. We'll set OK. And now what we'll do is just stretch it to fit. And we're just going to put it right over top of our our graph and I'll just leave the sides open like this so we can actually see it going up and down and what we should see right now you can see how we can look at the ind independent uh, input there and see it if I were to click on 
um, the graph we'd see that and we can actually see it going filling up and down so that's what we'll leave for their static bar graph or static bitmap going back to our bitmap page we'll look down further and you'll see that we have a dynamic bitmap and what that will do is allow us to have a on off condition based on a bit within the, the controller so in my case here on my dynamic dip bitmap I am using MC9 the same one that we're using here for the push button and if it's off we have the box closed and if it's on we have the box open and again the lock aspect ratio when it's stretched to fit is all incorporated in there so we can simulate that by turning it on and off and we can see that in our picture and up on our screen as well so we'll just hit OK so again bitmaps we can read from disk we can create our own um, graphics that will um, simulate things um, one thing that a lot of people I've seen simulate is fans and the fan movement just based on a bit turning on and off okay so we'll say OK and the last one we have is a multi-state bitmap and what that will allow us to do is to create a location where we can play through a series of different bitmaps to create a um, almost like an animated look so in our case here um, we have several different images and those images um, just are of the um, automation direct symbol the smiley guy and we have four of them um, and under the general here we have our tag name which is MHR15 and what we're, we're saying is display uh, a blank bitmap image um, when we don't have any action and our image itself the, the images are displayed as an image number so the number relates back to uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3 instead of the actual bit number in our case so as I put 0, 1, 2, 3 into this register then it corresponds with my corresponding um, sequence so there's 0, 1, 2, and 3 as I simulate it say OK and then since we're done now what we'll do is transfer this to our um, to our actual unit which I have located right here and we're connected through Ethernet so let's just send this project yes we will save it first so once we're finished save piling it then what we'll do is we'll transfer it we'll use the Ethernet connection now keep in mind that bitmaps when we're using them will take a lot of memory so um, just just be uh, cautious of that and watch your memory size if we have a lot of, a lot of bitmaps um, you can really consume a lot so hit OK and now what we can do is we can go to our actual screen we'll hit select page and we will go down to our bitmap and there's our bitmap uh, we have that we've programmed so as I turn on my, my uh, bitmap button you'll see it turns on at the same time you'll see my graphic actually turn on so that seems to work fine on off on off and the actual color and everything looks great onto the screen now, at the same time what you'll notice is I am connected to my uh, do more uh, designer and I have my do more simulator up here so in order to program uh, my bitmap there's my MC9 located right here and what I do is I turn on Y10 so if I look at my simulator Y10 turns on every time I click my Simulator button, which is exactly what happens, or my uh, bitmap button. And on the next part here, we have our 
one second, which is our multi-state bitmap, and every one half a second, we increment this count with the X8 on our simulator. And then when we get above four or above, we reset that back to zero again in MHR 15. So which is the same register we've specified where we're getting where the multi-state bitmap is coming from. So let's just look at look at our simulator again and let's turn on X8 and what we'll see is our graphic now changes and cycles through all the four different ones that we have. So bringing a little bit of life to your HMI for um, appearances to attract your user to look at particular information on your screen. And the last thing we also did was we put in that static bitmap with the tank. Let's just go back to our analog meter and bar graph. And there's our static uh, bitmap right there and our cylinder. And that was off of um, WX4. As we increase that, we should actually see the tank filling up, which is exactly what we see. Now we can clean that up to make it look a little uh, nicer and not see the background. But you can, I wanted you to show that we actually have, it's just a simple bar graph in the background. And if we just look at that tank, it looks like we're filling and emptying that tank. Now, all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. And if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. And the third thing to do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.